something very important is how to drink coffee in Portugal. I'm very biased, and I would say that we are one of the few countries that actually has good coffee. And what are the other ones? I would say Turkey and Italy. So we tend to drink a coffee very much like the Italians, and that's why we have one type of coffee that we call the Italian. So in Lisbon in particular, people from Lisbon can ask, the person at the counter that they want a bica. And bica is something that we called a coffee in Lisbon. If you go to Porto, they call it something else. And if you go all over the country, they will call it a coffee. But in Lisbon, we also call it bica. That is an espresso. But we drink espresso in many different ways. For example, the example here on the left, we call it an italiana, an Italian. And it's a very, very small shot of espresso. That is when it's 6 a.m. and you really have to wake up for the day. So uh, those who really need a super strong coffee, they will order an Italian. The Italian has a higher concentration of coffee in there. So it's a big wake up. A normal coffee, a normal espresso looks like the one on the right that I called it Binga. So it is not completely full, but you can ask it to be a, a, a full espresso. So the small cup of espresso will be full uh, up uh, to the top. But the one I show you here is the normal size of um, a um, beaker, a coffee, an espresso. Then for breakfast, either you go strong with those two ones or you want to add a little bit of milk. So you can ask for a garoto. What garoto means? In Portuguese, garoto means a kid, a boy. And this is an espresso with a dash of milk. And then you can ask meia de leite, which is half coffee, espresso, half milk. And then if you go for a proper breakfast, like you want a lot of milk, you ask for a galão, which is double espresso and everything else is a frothed milk. So this is what we have for a breakfast in terms of coffee. This might be what we have for breakfast in terms of everything. So we eat a lot of bread. One of the things that you may experience if you are living a gluten-free life, it is a very hard experience to be in Portugal because we have excellent, excellent bread. So either we have fresh bread with butter for uh, breakfast but we can also have a toast. And that is the size of the toast. If you ask for a tujada, which is a toast uh, for breakfast, it's a two-story two high uh, toast covered in real, real butter. And I would say that for myself, I would have to share this. Most people love the middle because it does not have the, uh, the hard part all around it particularly children, they always want to go for the middle part of the toast. But this is a very typical, simple breakfast. And then if you want to add a little bit more, we have a lot of pastries. Most of our pastries are divided into traditional Portuguese pastries and other pastries that mostly are of French influence because of the French experience of the cafe. The original Portuguese pastries most of them were created in convents and monasteries, whereas the others are inspiration from what we find in uh, French patisserie. As you can see in here, we have croissants. We have croissants of many kinds. Uh, but here we also have an éclair, which is a French uh, uh, pastry. But we also have the custard tarts, the Portuguese custard tart. The quick, super quick Portuguese breakfast is standing at the counter of the café, ordering an espresso and eating a custard tart and off you go. Oh boy, you eat custard tarts every day. Some people may do have custard tarts every day, but all, let me tell you that all of all our pastries, the custard tarts are the ones that have the least calories. I think it's about 165 calories a custard tart. For that reason, a lot of people actually have to. So it's at your discretion. Let's move into the more specific uh, aspect of these sweets. This is an image of um, 
one of the biggest hospitals in Europe in the 16th century, All Saints Hospital over here. And all of these buildings around were convents and monasteries. Lisbon had a lot of convents and monasteries that were mostly destroyed with the earthquake of the 7th of 1755. And so most of these convents and monasteries, they were self-sufficient. So they had a lot of hands means that they had a lot of eggs and they were relatively rich, which means they would have access to sugar. So this creates a combination of egg yolks and sugar, which is basically the base for most of our traditional pastries that were created in monasteries and also in uh, convents. The custard tart, the Steldenate, is one of those examples. The Steldenate was created as Pestel de Belay, as we have here on the left, in the monastery of Geronimus in Lisbon. But in 1836, we had a civil war, and one of the results of that civil war was that all the religious orders were extinct. So monks and nuns had to leave the monasteries and also the um, convents. Two monks in the monastery of Geronimus in Lisbon, they left the monastery and went next door where there used to be a sugar refinery. And that sugar refinery accepted to buy the recipe for these pastries. They were the ones that started to produce that, and they are known as Pestel de Belay. That's a trademark. That is the only place in the world where one can eat Pestel de Belay. There is no other place. All over Lisbon, all over Portugal, and a little bit all over the world, you can eat Pestel de Belay, in which they try to replicate the original. Only five people know the original recipe that is locked in a bag. So if you come to Lisbon and you want to eat the original custard tart, you would have to get in line. Don't get scared because they have like 400 seats inside. And though you might have a big line outside, they are super quick. You will have to get in line and try to have it. On the other hand, everybody makes custard tarts. And actually there's competitions to figure who is the best, who is making the best custard tart of the year. So... In my opinion, and in the opinion of, opinion of many, this custard tart from a brand called Manteigueira, it's probably the best. I would dare to say that it's as good as the original. And sometimes I would dare to say that it's even better than the original. The greatest advantage of going to Manteigueira, it's that Manteigueira is in several uh, places in Lisbon. It's in the downtown of Lisbon, in Baixa, and it's also in Chiado, and also in another market by the river called the uh, Time Out Market. So there are many places where you can go and try to and have these custard tarts. If it's about 4 p.m., you might find a line uh, at the shop because it's that time of the day that you want a bit of a sweet. But there are many... Uh, times during the day in which you will not find a line at uh, Manteigueria. You will always find a line in Belay, unless it's February, I would say, or mid-January, because there's not as many tourists as there are throughout the rest of the year. Now, talking about um, what we call conventional pastries, which are the ones created in these convents and monasteries, egg yolks and sugar is the base for everything. There are thousands of different uh, pastries. This store that I'm showing you here, it's called Alcoa, and uh, it's based in Chiado, and everything they sell in there, it's conventional pastries. So you can get a box uh, with an assortment of many different uh, uh, types of pastries, um, and um, let me tell you that some of them are extremely sweet, so it's something that you should have with an espresso to balance uh, things out. Uh, it is also not the kind of thing that one would eat every day. And some of them are um, uh, eaten uh, throughout the year in special occasions. So there are some pastries that we eat for Easter, uh, others that are typical for Christmas. I'm not even bringing Christmas over here because basically everything is deep fried 
with sugar and uh, cinnamon. Not from Lisbon, but it's present for you to enjoy uh, in Lisbon is ovish balls, which means soft eggs. And that is a pastry uh, that was also created uh, by the monks in Aveiro towards the north. So it's a, a region that it's close to Porto. And um, you actually have a store of that uh, in Chiado, in that same neighborhood. And as you can see, this is made of the bread um, that of that uh, small thing you take uh, for mass. And inside is basically egg yolks and sugar. This is, comes usually in very beautiful boxes. And though it is eggs, uh, they last for quite, I don't know, something you, within five days, you can still eat them. So it's something that you might be able to bring back home uh, with you 